am a firm believer that <clears throat> whatever your goals are in life and for the sake of this particular broadcast, the goal is to be healthy. And I mean healthy spiritually at the top, mentally, as well as physically. And this is a time where it's very, very popular <clears throat> to say that I practice or you practice self-love, but there can be no self-love where we become okay with either self-abuse, abuse of any kind, or whether we are in any way removing ourselves from that equation of doing our part. I can think of very few instances where a person who is struggling in some way um, is incapable of playing any part. I think uh, un unless they're, they, they are, are just not functional at all, invalid, if you will, just through and through mentally, physically, emotionally, you know, and, 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 and so they're not capable in that case of, of contributing. So therefore they're those that have to make decisions for them. But I don't think that represents a larger number of those who struggle these days. And I'm afraid that all too often we are seeking help and support, which we should, by the way, but that with that though comes uh, uh, the belief that the support which I seek, that the full responsibility, the full ownership, the full contribution is coming from that source. It is the same thing when it comes to therapy. Well, first, firstly, I know that there are many, 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 many that are, are struggling um, with their mental health. We won't even discuss the, the physical and, and other areas of health. And it's almost a, uh, a self-defeating uh, process where one, we innate we we come out the gate sometimes with the many reasons why we will not seek it and we will not sacrifice for it to get it knowing that doing so right um is actually going to support getting me to, to exactly where i want to be and that is healthy and then the other side of that is the belief that I don't play a role, you know, at all, that it is the sole job, professionalism, and the responsibility of a person to actually get me to that place. So one, one problem, one, is us not being committed and us not making up our minds and saying, I'm going to stop discounting or counting myself out and I'm going to stop immediately speaking and seeing every reasons why I cannot do this. I cannot get the help that I need. And for many, it is, I can't afford it. I don't, you know, whatever. And, and, but without actually many times taking a true honest and sacrificial look at what can be what can i do what can i do without in order to make this this part of what i need a possibility for me and so some all too quickly all too easily say nope i can't do it and won't take sometimes that first step that's first step of sacrifice even some will not sacrifice even time i don't have time or I don't have resources, but don't realize that not everyone, but that I would think a greater number of us have very uh, minor, or should I say, even even in some cases, um, wasteful things that are of less importance when it comes to their health that they can actually do away with to get the health that they need. Um, and then the thinking, that second being the thing that just the whole thinking that, you know, that 
even if I take that step, I'm only, I'm fully reliant upon this individual to kind of get me to my goal. And that that's not, you know, a role that I play in this. I just need to show up and that's it. And, 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 and that is probably the most common where we believe that the answers to what we need, right, fully lies in the hands of a person and we don't bear or any responsibility, nor do we, can we play a significant role? And I will tell you that we can play a significant role. And any good therapist, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to put you to work. They're going to uh, give you, um, after learning who you are, what your goals are and what your needs are, they're going to, you're going to have some action items, some things that you need to implement because the goal is that you are able to function independently because after every session, you've got to do life, right? And so you're not going to be able to pick up a phone or to have 24-7 access to address and get help for every struggle. So good ones give you action items. And then when you're given these plans, these coping plans, these tools that support your goals and your success, you actually have to implement them into your life. And those who do not implement them, those who do not do the work, um, they don't get the result. And they often stay um, in therapy for years and years and years, right? And some endlessly and have not gotten very far. So, but I wanna encourage you about that. You actually have more power, more input, in you than you actually know. I also believe in self therapy, right? And that's something that is not often taught. And self therapy is the implementation of those tools that I have not named in this discussion. But I guess I'm coming on just to say there is a huge role that you can play, but that you also have more power in you than you actually realize which then begins to brings me to this last point, which really was why I chose to uh, come on to speak about this in the first place. Those other things that I said, they were just additions that I put in the front, but really at the core of um, what I wanted to say is this, and it relates to the thinking and what you say to yourself. Let's say you couldn't do any of the things that I have named in terms of setting up times of counsel therapy and things like that, right? With your minister or your counselor or whatever. Let's let's just say that was, that was not, that cannot be the priority just yet. And it needs to be underlined three times just yet. But the first thing that I believe that we have to practice before we darken a door of anyone that is going to help us is that we must first practice helping ourselves. And one way, one simple thing, one, it's just a simple thing that we've got to, to begin to hack into when we see ourselves kind of doing this, right? And hack into and correct ourselves on the spot and to keep doing it until it becomes habitual for us. And that is to watch your words. Now, there is an expression and it when i tell you it it causes the hair on my head to just raise and the hair on my neck if there's any to actually stand up and it is a phrase that i i would love for you to practice eliminating from your vocabulary and that is to use terms like my depression and my anxiety both of which first of all we know are many times thinking based as well as chemically based, you know, but the thinking is what we want to address. And then the words. And so something as simple as saying my anxiety and my depression is telling your brain to take possession of this as if it's an appendage, you know, like an arm or a leg that is so joined to me, right? That it goes with me everywhere that I go and that it is permanent. Like it's in a permanent, 
It's a permanent possession of mine, part of my identity, part of my body. We say it just like that. My depression, my anxiety, rather than saying that I struggle with this or this is um, something that I'm currently dealing with. We say my, as if you said my eye, my arm, my leg, my money, my whatever. And we have to remember, folks, that whatever you speak, you are also listening. And it is true. The scriptures say that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Not that you're necessarily creating things and, and causing them to come into existence, but you are with your words programming yourself. Because if I believe that for all of my life, I will have depression or I will have anxiety, then guess what? I am correct. But however, if I chose to believe that things will not always be this way, that there is hope that I'm not going, this is not going to be something that I'm going to struggle with the rest of my life, you're also correct. Do you see the difference? So which result would you prefer when you really seriously consider that? Of course, the result that you prefer is the fact that life will not always be this way. So why not begin to do what I think is a significant, makes a significant dent, right, in your fight is to begin to retrain the brain and to begin to act in correspondence with the goals and the hopes that you seek down to your very words. So I pray that you would hear me on this and to hear how very serious it is for you to watch and pay very close attention to your words because it programs you. And it's no way that if you are holding on to the belief that freedom is not possible for you, that you will and can be free. So before you do a thing, start to pay attention to the things that you say down to the, 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 the just the smallest details. Don't say my depression, my anxiety, as if it's, it's a part of you, as if it's in a permanent attachment, something that you have taken possession of. It is something that has happened to you and, and is happening to you in your life. And so that's one way that you can practice self-therapy. And that is by, first of all, changing your words and making sure that your actions, that your, your meaning your decisions, and your choices. And, and an action is also the words that you choose and speak. That's also an action, making sure that all of these things correspond with the result that you desire. And maybe you're saying, you know, I don't know if I'll ever, well, don't say that. Don't, don't begin to say that. Just keep, keep, ensuring that everything you do and say is supportive of the help and the result that you seek. And watch even on that level, things begin to change and watch hope for your future. Hope that corresponds with what it is you hope for. Watch, watch, watch the narrative begin to shift. Watch how pivotal your belief system, right? Begins to, re, or should I say, watch how pivotal your words, right? The things that you quote, your habits begin to actually retrain your brain, which once that brain has been retrained, it's actually the first step, you know, to healing, from many of the mental health challenges that so many of us face. I pray that this has blessed you. And always remember that life and death are truly in the power of the tongue. Reject even the urge, correct yourself. It's not your depression and your anxiety 
These are not things that are wedged into your identity. This is not who you are. What you go through is not who you are. You are who God says you are. And you have been carefully crafted, wonderfully made. So much went into the making of you and the works of the Lord. That is you. That is I are marvelous. They are perfection. God bless you. Thank you.